Most Wing Chun people fight square shoulder, right? So everything's in the center line. So use my zipper as a center line. And if you're really big, that's okay. But I'm not a big guy. So we fight at an angle. So if you, it, my guard would be here. Now this is for classroom. I'm not going to stand in a fight like this. My Wing Chun's going to look like that. It's going to look like a boxer, but we'll do the classroom version. But you notice my center's facing off there. So you're a big guy. So if you throw a punch at me, yeah, throw any punch. punch, it doesn't matter. I'm moving away over here. If you throw your lead arm, see, I'm moving away from that hand. If you throw a straight punch with, with your lead hand, see, I'm moving away from you. So I'm away from that hand. But if I stayed square and you punched, and I block through another punch, through another, keep throwing punches, one of them is eventually going to get me if I stay square. So that's why we fight at an angle. So it's a little different than the popular Wing Chun. We also don't punch with the fist this way. It's at an angle because it fits here. So if I hit you, it fits the rib, rib cage. It fits under your jaw. It fits this bone here. So, so we do diagonal fists as opposed to uh, vertical fists. So basically our theory is if you get into a fighting stance, so I'm going to move away from you here, see? I'm moving away from that hand. So I want to try to fight you parallel leg. So your left leg's in front, my right leg is in front. Most fighters fight cross leg. So right-handed fighters usually lead with the left, and this is their power hand. South paws lead with the right. Right-handed fighters, orthodox fighters, sometimes have trouble with south paws. So if you get, so if we're both right-handed, this is the traditional way of fighting. But if you notice this, look, I'm in line with that punch. I'm in line with that punch. See this? Now leave that punch right there. I'm not going to really move back. I'm just going to change my perspective. See, I'm a little further away from that hand. So if you're in this stance, I want to fight parallel leg so I can move away from you, right? So I can get away from you. If you change your stance, I'm changing my stance. Okay, so that's a little different theory than most Wing Chun styles. We don't sit on the rear leg. We're 50-50. We move on the balls of our feet. So if I step in to do something, on the ball of my feet, if the situation changes, I can move away. If I land on my heel and you attack me, a lot of Wing Chun people drag their foot. It's like dr driving the car with the emergency brake on. So we don't drag our feet, we pick up our feet. We're 50-50, so I step forward, I step back, and I'm using the ball of my feet because the fight is dynamic. I may want to step in and something happens. If I'm on the ball of my foot, I can push away. Say I come to punch you and you pull out a razor blade. I, I, I'm going to move away, you know? If I land on my he heel, I got, yeah. I used to learn this, drag the foot. And that's like driving the car with your brake on. I don't do 60-40, 70-30, it's 50-50. Most fighters do 50-50. When I see a fighter fighting like that, maybe I'll change if he's successful. But right now, I'm going to do 50-50. We do the guards for classroom. You never want to do this in a street fight, get into a kung fu stance. Where I'm coming from, you do that, oh, I'm going to go pop my trunk and pull out something for you. It's intimidating. And plus, if you get into a fight and you beat somebody up and some witnesses are around, he knows martial arts. In some states, you can get in trouble. But if I make him think it's a street fight, so when I do my Wing Chun, if I was getting into a street fight, it would be like this. And then I would go into the Wing Chun, but I'm not going to do a stance like that. Whenever you see me do these stances, it's just for classroom. I'll give you an example. In New York City, a lot of people carry razor blades in their mouth, inside the jaw, and they can go spit it out and slash you. Wow. So if I hold my hands out, you're gonna get slashed. I got a video of a guy demonstrating that I can show you. It's something they learned in jail. So they put the razor blade between their fingers. As a matter of fact, sometimes you get into a fight and a guy, while he's fighting you, he'll call out numbers. He'll say 15, 10, that's how many stitches you're gonna get when he cuts you. Wow. So I don't wanna hold my hand out like this. This is just classroom or for show. Chi Sao, what is your take on kind of Chi Sao? Do you teach a lot of that kind of sensitivity drill? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Throw a round punch at my head, round punch. Like this type but of? Push through like you're gonna, see? Uh -huh. So what that does, so look, you push through, mm -hmm. I let it go over. Mm -hmm. So how do I know when to do that? It's from doing Chi Sao. Oh. This is only a drill. It's like, it's, it's to teach me, what, look, I'll give you a good example. Okay. Even if you don't know Chi Sao, mm -hmm. push my hand to your right, I let it go. Push my hand down, I let it go. Push my hand to your right with this hand, I let it go. So it teaches you not to 
how to deal with force. The problem with chi sao is people can get really good at chi sao. Uh -huh. People can do chi sao and do fancy <laughs> techniques, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they can't fight to save their butts. Uh -huh. It's like, I'm good at doing push-ups. Right. Now let's fight. <laughs> so I'm good at doing chi sao patty cake. Let's fight. No, it's a training method to an end. It teaches reflex, but what it also does is it makes you able to use left and right brain independently. So when, even if you don't know the positions, if we're doing chi sao. So we're standing. No, no you, can, okay. you can stand this okay. way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. But okay. the thing is just roll. Just do a little bit of a roll. Now just, no, it's forearms in, in chi sao. Oh, it's fine. forearms only. Oh. So we're rolling. So what's happening is, see? See how you got on top and I, got on I took it on top? Oh. See? So I, I go on top. See? So whatever it is. But what's happening is while I'm using this hand, I'm using the right hemisphere of my brain. So this hand, I have to use the left hemisphere. Oh. So I'm actually learning how to do both hands. Wow. So when you're doing Silam Tao, if you ever notice in Wing Chun first form, people put their fists here. If you rest your fists here while I'm doing the form, I'm only focusing with the left hemisphere of my brain because the left hemisphere controls the right. When you're doing the form, you want to keep one fist off the body, at least two fingers off the body, which makes my right side of the brain or my right hemisphere focus on this hand. So while I'm doing the form, I'm actually focusing on this hand. If I just rest this hand here, I'm only using one hand independently. So Wing Chun teaches you how to use both sides of the brain independently, like a pianist playing two different rhythms. So Chi Sao helps you, you gotta worry about this hand and that hand. This hand can do something, that hand's doing something else. So that's what Chi Sao helps you do. So that's interesting. So in a practice kind of cross-lateral mobilization type of format, you'd of course do this, but of course in a real fight, you wouldn't translate this in a real fight, right? So this is literally more a cross-lateral exercise than anything. Yes, it's, it's a lot of people can't do this mm -hmm. or rub their head and pat the stomach, you know? So that's what, that's what Chi Sao helps you do. It does have a practical application if we're this close to each other. Because now the guy who's really good at Wing Chun is probably going to win. Right? Well, wait a minute. In a practical but application, if, range, if we're this close time together, time. I'm going to headbutt him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to Chi Sao him. I'm not going to Chi Sao you. If, a this is a dr I don't even look at it that way. <laughs> this is just a drill. <laughs> Outside of the fight, I, don't, I want to touch and go. Right. Outside of the right. fight, I'm not going to... But most... From what I've seen, most Wing Chun guys don't feel comfortable in that range. They're always trying to get to this range, right? Oh, uh, okay. Am well, I right or am I wrong? close range. When people say close range, there's only one range. There's no long range, no close range. If I, it's fighting range. Uh -huh. So okay. I think that's a misnomer. That's my personal opinion. There's no, if, I'm, if I can hit you, that's the range. Okay. The range. The right range is the range where I can hit you. Tai Chi push hands kind of use a little bit of a circle, right? Okay, so here's the thing with Wing Chun. If, if you don't know the form, uh, the proper positioning, I, I just do this. Just turn. See? So a lot of people do this. Let me show you something. They do this. We call that driving the bus. It really should be forward. So I've had friends of mine who did Tai Chi try to do push hands with me. Once they go here, I go forward. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, so it's contrary to the Wing Chun training. Uh -huh. And it's good training, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that when you're doing Wing Chun and you're doing Chi Sao, watch, I'm pushing forward. See, I'm not doing this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And this is what a lot of people get into. Uh -huh. They circle. Uh -huh. The thing is, my sense. opponent's here, my focus should be to his center of mass, not out there. Uh -huh. So why would I go here? Right. I'll give you a good example. Right, right. There's a position called a Tan Sao and a Bong Sao. So if I go over there, no, stay right where you are, if I go over here, bring this hand up and continue my energy there. See? So I'm going to show you something. So from here, I'm going to go over there. Bring this hand up and push me over there. Try that again. Okay. okay. See? If I'm going there, you just assist me along like Tai Chi yes. uh -huh. Uh -huh. or Aikido. Uh -huh. It should be towards you. Uh -huh. See? Yes. So that's the, that's the difference. 